Well, good morning everyone. This is Cole Thompson and my first attempt at a video tutorial. You would laugh if you could see the low-tech way I'm doing this. I've got my iPhone taped to a tripod and I'm sitting here in the nude. Well, I exaggerate a little bit. Anyway, I am producing this little video on the six steps I use to convert my images to black and white at the request of a friend, John Je Evans Jr. out in the St. Louis area. He takes these beautiful images of the St. Louis Arch, but he does them in color. And he recently was trying to do one in black and white, was having some questions. And as we were on the phone talking, I said it would be so much easier if I could show you, John. So I promised him that I would make a very quick attempt to produce a short video. And I am doing it the low tech way by uh, photographing the screen. So for the image I've chosen today, it's one I took at Easter Island and I'm going to show you how I convert it to black and white using my six steps. The first step is to simply bring the image in and use the raw converter to bring it into Photoshop. I shoot in raw, that's very important, and I shoot in color. Now what I do here is anything that can be done in raw, you want to do it here. The results just turn out better. So I might adjust my exposure, my contrast, I'm certainly going to look at everything. Uh, shadow detail, let's uh, bring up some shadow detail. I can improve the whites. And I just go by what feels best. Then I open the image. And there we are with the image in color. So step two is for me to take it and convert it to black and white. Now you don't want to let Photoshop do it, otherwise you wouldn't be needed. Part of the process, the artistic process, is to convert it yourself. So going into the black and white converter, you have all of these color channels. And these color channels, if you play with them, you'll notice the detail that can be brought out. So I want to bring detail out in those moi. So the red affected them, the yellow did. There's no green grass here, so that's not going to work. Now, the blue channels are interesting. You can make your sky go really dark, but you may not be able to tell it on this little monitor that when you do this, it adds a lot of noise. So if you're going to tweak those blue channels, do it very sparingly. So that's my good starting point. Now, for step three, I always go in and I make sure, using levels, that I have a true black and a true white. Now, a lot of times people just judge it by looking at the monitor. Say, oh yeah, I've got a good black and a good white. But if you look at your histogram here, you can see that I don't have a true black, despite what the monitor tells me. So if I bring this over, it brings my blacks to a true black. And if I bring this over, it brings my whites to a true white. So that's about where I'm going to take it. Now there's this middle slider that affects the midtones, and I'm going to tweak that a little because it opens up my midtones and the detail on the moise body. Now I can go too far either way and it's not very pleasing. And it's up to you what's pleasing. So here's where I'm going to take these guys. Okay, now the next step is really just about dodging and burning. Now I like to have really dark skies so I'm going to take my pen to my tablet. You can see my pen right here. And I do have a Wacom tablet, and I have a lot of people tell me, oh, I can do this with a mouse, I don't need a tablet. Phooey, you cannot. You really do need to have a tablet to do fine detailed work. Now, I'm going to burn the sky down. Now, the biggest problem I see most people, beginners, do when they're burning their sky down is I'm going to, first of all, choose the burn tool, and I'm going to make a nice big brush and I'm going to use zero hardness. That's one thing they do wrong. And the next thing they all do wrong is that it seems to default off into 25 or 50 percent. That's way too strong. I'm going to be doing this at one or two percent. We'll go two percent today. And I'm going to work very slowly and keep the brush moving and a nice big broad brush to darken the sky. And you need to lift your pen every once in a while. If you hold it down too long, uh, there is not a cumulative effect so it works much faster when you do a lot of short strokes and lift the pen than if you do one big long stroke. And you can see this guy's starting to dark down a little bit. 
moving it around so I don't get any patterns. Okay. So we're darkening the sky down. If you'll do it with a nice big brush with a small amount, you'll have a much greater chance of getting a nice even look to your dodging and burning. So there we are. Now we're starting to lose that little cloud up there. So what I might come over here do is go to the dodge tool, make a smaller brush size, again with zero hardness, and we're going to go to the highlights, and we're going to stay at 2%, and we're going to do the highlights here. Just make sure these guys stay in the picture. Okay. Now, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take this foreground, which is very busy and distracting, and we're going to burn that completely out of the picture. So we're going to go with an appropriate size brush, about right here. Again, zero hardness, and we're going to start with the highlights and burn them down. Now I'm going to work a little more quickly here for the sake of the video and put it up to 4%. And first thing I'm going to do is take the highlights and burn them down. If I just started with the shadows, then the highlights and midtones would peek through and your burning would look unnatural. So first we burn the highlights, lifting the pen every once in a while to let it catch up. Then we're going to take and burn the mid-tones. We'll just keep lifting the pen up every once in a while. You can't see it, but I'm lifting the pen so it has a much faster cumulative effect. And again, what I'm doing here is getting rid of a very distracting foreground. I might actually crop some of this out too, because I could crop this a little tighter. And then I take my shadows and burn this down. And how much you burn it down is up to you. Some people might stop here leaving some shadow detail. I'm more likely to go all the way and just make it completely, take it completely out of the picture. It gives you an idea. Now, the detail of the moi is still a little blocked up for my liking. So I'm going to take a dodge tool and I'm going to dodge some of the mid-tones on the body and just bring up some of the detail here. And again, I use a, uh, generally on this kind of work, the sharpness is set to zero. And I'm bringing up mid-tone detail, just improving the brightness a little bit here in the darker areas. It also, in effect, adds more contrast to the picture. Okay, so we're about there. Now I think this little gravel area is a little distracting to me also, so I'm going to go back and burn this down, making the appropriate size brush, starting with the highlights. And we're just going to make this gravel go a little darker. Now we'll go to the mid-tones. Moving the brush fairly quickly. And it's at such a low strength that it's very forgiving. Then finally we'll go to the shadows. I'm just trying to remove distractions. I might even come in if I were doing this uh, taking my time, I might even remove some more of this detail in the foreground. So there we have the basic image. And I still like, uh, want a little more detail in these guys, so I think that I would dodge them a bit more in the mid-tone, spend some time here. But it's pretty close, so we're going to move on. Okay, so the next tool I use is the contrast tool. And it looks pretty contrasty now, but what I've learned is that everything looks contrasty and great and really pops on a monitor. That's because it's backlit. Everything looks wonderful. But when you go to print it, that print is using reflected light. 
and so it will always come off the printer looking much flatter and people will be very disappointed. It looks so good on the monitor. Why doesn't the print look that good? Well, it's because the monitor uses transmitted light and the print uses reflected light. So what I do is I take the adjustments and I go to contrast and I will add contrast, usually somewhere in about the 35 range, something just approximately like that. You'll learn to judge that on your own. And what that does is it pumps it up extra so the print looks decent. And the sixth and last step would be to simply spot my print. Um, what I do is I typically take my print and I start at the uh, 300%. And what I do is I just scroll back and forth across the print looking for spots, sensor spots. A lot of people say, well, why don't you clean your sensor? Well, I was cleaning my sensor constantly. Uh, you just can't get rid of all the spots sometimes. And so I just scan the, there's a good one. And I simply take for this one, the spot healing brush, make the brush size about double the size of the spot. And it samples the area around it and gets rid of it. Now, if you find yourself a spot that is against a hard object, let's see if we can find one. I doubt we will on this one, but let's try. If your spot is against an object, let's see if we can find somebody. And I'm not seeing one, but let's pretend we had a spot right here. If I were to use this uh, spot healing brush tool, it samples the pixels around it. So watch what happens when I do the spot. See, it's made it a little bit dark. I don't know if you can see it, but that's because it was sampling down here. So we're going to undo that. And what I would use then is just the, uh, the clone tool, the clone stamp tool. And by doing the clone stamp tool, I would actually specify the sample from right here, and I would hit the spot there, and it wouldn't pick up any of this. Okay, that is the six steps that I use to convert an image to black and white. Um, I don't want to suggest that everybody should use six steps, but what I really would like to suggest is that you don't need a complicated process, that a simple process works wonderfully. You don't need a lot of plugins and monitor calibrators and special ink sets and all of these things that people use. Uh, six steps is what I typically use. And let's take a look now kind of at the before and after. Here's the image when we started. And here's the final image. So anyway, I hope this is useful, a little bit helpful for those who are struggling with uh, dodging and burning. Remember those two points. Keep your edge, the hardness, to zero. And maybe just use a strength of 1, 2, 3%. Very, very weak. And uh, I will try to do this again and maybe a little more professionally next time. Thanks for watching, everybody.